Hence, God admonishes his people. Ask me of the things that are to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands. Command me ye. Isaiah 45 verse 11. I am the eternal your God, training you for your good, leading you by the right way. Isaiah chapter 48 verse, verse 17. When they tell you to consult mediums and ghosts that creep and gibber in low murmurs, ask them if people should not rather consult your God. Say, why consult the dead on behalf of the living? Consult the message and the counsel of God. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 19 You befold yourself like your fathers. You break your troth with thee for their detestable impieties. And you befold yourself with all your sacrifices of idols. Burning your sons alive down to this very dear and I am to be consulted by you. Oh Israel, by my life, say the Lord, the Eternal, no, I will not be consulted by you. Ezekiel chapter 20 verses 30 and 31. The Israelites had acquired the practice of seeking unto the spiritually dead while dwelling in Egypt and had to a great extent adopted idolatrous customs there. Hence among the first injunctions laid upon them by the Lord after their exodus from that country was the one forbidding them to inquire of the dead. You shall not practice archery, not practice witchcraft, Leviticus chapter 19 verse 26. Never go to a medium or a wizard, never define yourself by consulting them. I am the eternal, Leviticus chapter 19 verse 31. Any person who consults a medium or a wizard deserting me for them, I will set my face against that person and outlaw him from his kinfolks. Leviticus chapter 20 verse 6. These passages show that the man and woman who had familiar spirits or who were wizards were mediums through whom the evil spirit spoke. These mediums were themselves responsible for their evil associations from which they could have kept a loaf as they turned confidingly to God and sought communion with the good spirit world. Their punishment was therefore amply deserved. Beside the mediums, there were persons engaged in communicating with the evil spirit world through clairvoyance. References to the blood guilt of the wizards do not mean that these had committed actual bloodshed or physical murder, but relate to the slaying of souls or the estrangement of spirits from God. They had indeed incurred blood guilt in the sense that they had wrought those who went to them into communication with the spirits of evil in that we are leading them away from God and becoming the cause of their spiritual death. The contamination to which those who associate with wizards expose themselves is not of a physical nature, but proceeds from the vicious ord which they absorb from the contact and which defiles their own heart, making it a hotbed for the activities of evil spirit beings. There occurs in the Bible at least one detailed account of a case of necromancy, namely that of Saul's visit to the witch of Endor. When Samuel had died, all Israel had mourned for him and buried him in his own town of Ramah. Now Saul had cleared the mediums and wizards out of the country, but when the Philistine mustered and went into camp at Shunem, 
And when Saul mustered all Israel to encamp at Gilboa, Saul was afraid and his heart trembling with terror at the sight of the Philistine army. He consulted the Eternal, but the Eternal would not answer him either by dreams or by the sacred lot or by prophets. Then Saul said to his courtiers, Find me a witch that I may go and consult her. His courtiers said, There is a witch at the door. So Saul, disguising himself and changing his clothes, went with two men to the woman by night. He said to her, Inquire for me as a medium. Bring me up the ghost of someone whom I named to you. The woman said to him, You know what Saul has done, cutting mediums and wizards out of the country. Why then are you laying a trap for my life to have me put to death? Then Saul swore to her by the life of the eternal, this will not involve you in any guilt. So the woman said, Whom shall I bring up for you? Bring up Samuel, he said. The woman looked at Saul and screamed. The woman said to Saul, Why have you deceived me? You are Saul. The king said to her, Have no fear. What do you see? The woman said to Saul, I see a God coming up of the earth. He said to her, What is he like? She said, It is an old man coming up. He is covered with mantle. So Saul knew it was Samuel. He bowed with his face to the ground and did obeisance. Then Samuel said to Saul, Why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? Saul answered, I am so distressed. The Philistine make war against me and God has abandoned me. He answers me no more either by prophets or by dreams. So I have called you to tell me what to do. But Samuel said, Why ask me when the Eternal has abandoned you to side with your rival? The Eternal has treated you as he declared by me that he would. The Eternal has torn the kingdom out of your hand and given it to David your neighbor. It is because you did not obey the voice of the Eternal, because you did not carry out his fierce anger against Amalek, that the Eternal has done this to you today, and the Eternal will put Israel with yourself into the power of the Philistines, and tomorrow shall you and your sons be with me. 1 Samuel 28 verses 3-19 there is much in this account which you will find hard to understand and which are therefore to be explained to you. Does it not strike you as singular that Saul should have trembled at the sight of the Philistine host? That was not at all like Saul who was a brave man and had been in countless battles always facing death fearlessly. Why then the sudden attack of faint-heartedness? Here you find one of those strange occurrences in which you so often meet in life. It is what you call a premonition of death. The expression is not well chosen. It would be more correct to speak of an assurance of death. At the very first sight of the army of the Philistines, something within him told Saul that the hour of his death was at hand. That hour is indeed appointed for all by faith. But what was the nature of the inner voice that caused Saul to feel sure that he would meet death in the coming battle? It was the same kind of a vice as that which called to so many of your soldiers in the great war. You will not live through the next attack, or you will not live through the deer, or this is your last leave of absence. You will never again see your family and friends. 
why did so many soldiers who had often been home and leave before find it so hard to return to the front and the occasion which proved to be their last? In the case of Saul, as in that of all others who know to a certainty, 